Addiction. How about addicted to debt? Yeah, that's the name of a new book. Howard B. Slaughter is the author. And uh, addicted to debt, the subtitle is... Get out and stay out. <sighs> that's such a hard thing, Howard. It is, Lynn. It absolutely is. But we really have to focus on this whole debt addiction. And it's causing a big, big problem. Gambling, all of those things are tied to the addiction to debt. And the challenge is many people don't believe they're addicted to debt. And I'll just give you one quick example. If you play the lottery every day, that's a challenge because now you're looking to win money, in many cases to pay off the debt. There are other things that indicate that uh, you're addicted to debt. And when we look at the statistics, only one in four individuals indicate that they're even debt free. And the reason I wrote this book is because we hear a lot of people talk about you want to be wealthy, how do you get wealthy? Mm -hmm. This book is not about how, it's about why not live debt free. And I know that that is achievable. You may not ever become wealthy, but you can become debt free. Debt free. So when you say addicted to debt, is this literal? Um, like we literally become addicted to living in that state of debt? Absolutely. One of the other statistics we found, two-thirds of Americans say that they think they'll die with debt. Hmm. They will never be debt-free. Uh, look at shopping malls, places like that. There are people that go to the malls frequently, online shopping, gambling, all those things, they're, they're debt. And many of those items are non-appreciable assets. Mm -hmm. So they're spending money repetitively on things that really don't appreciate. And if we can get control, people, if we talked about this as a drug or something like that, people mm -hmm. would understand that. And that's why the book is so shocking to people, because they don't expect to hear, you know, you're really addicted to debt. If you do the same thing we know over and over that again, repetitive it's behavior. repetitive behavior. And people do it all the time. Some people buy cars every three years, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Nothing's wrong with the car. I'm not saying you, you can't buy a car. But is there a need to do it every three years? Should you go out to restaurants every week? You have to manage where you are. And today, people have gotten out of control. And so I just want to be a sounding board to say, you know what? Living debt free is much better than living in debt. OK, so clearly you hit a couple of nerves. <laughs> <laughs> couple of nerves, right okay, around that shopping okay, mall kind okay, of thing. OK, OK, um, So does the, will the book then help me to break that habit? The book will give you some ideas on what you can do to be debt free. OK. Let me give you one example. Very simple, basic. People have heard this before. Live below your means. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to do. We often say we can live below our means, but when you get that pay raise, or things of that nature, people move up. And if you can stay where you are, that's one of the indicators that can make a big difference. Another thing, to just give you a perfect example, uh, use charge cards instead of credit cards. There are a lot of people that don't know the difference between the two. The difference quickly is simply this. A charge card means you must pay it off monthly. So you're really not using credit, hence credit card. More debt over time. And many people don't realize paying balances at the minimum amount on credit cards means in many cases you'll have that credit card for many, many years on mm -hmm. the balance thereof. So use charge cards instead of credit cards. That's another key indicator. Uh, I also talked about in the book the, the challenges with student loans. Do you realize that people 60 years and older have had their student loan debt quadruple. Wow, because they've had it they've over had that it period over. of time. Deferments, we'll get to it. And here's the thing about federal student loan debts. You really can't get out of it. They never right? go away. They never go away. And so if you don't have to take a federal, and I'm not advocating right. that you don't go to school, but you have to think about that. Many people don't realize that you're not going to bankrupt yourself out of that federal debt. Uh, the only way would be to, to leave this earth, and you don't want to do that. Wait, so even if you file for bankruptcy, those federal loans don't go away? Federal, not student exempt. loans. Not student loans. Wow. It's government. Uh -huh. And so they have ways of getting their money. So today, people at the age of 60 uh, are still paying student loans. And that's not a good thing. So I always advocate if you don't have to, use other means to... Uh, uh, go to school if you can if because you can. Yeah, if you can I'm not saying it's wrong to do but at least be aware of what it is you're doing 
uh, when you take out those student loans. Well, even when you talk about deferments, I think right. that, you know, you kind of think, oh, well, I'll just catch my breath. Right. I, Lynn, I spoke to a woman uh, a couple of weeks ago who was in my office, and she talked about uh, she had a student loans, about $150,000 of student loans, and she was trying to help her daughter uh, get through her situation, and she still had a big challenge on her own. So we see a lot of that today, and so if we can manage those things, we can do much better in managing our debt. The other big factor that makes it good for us to get out of debt is it's a health issue, too. Stress. Uh, stress is a big factor when you have debt. And here's why. Some people don't recognize it, but if you owe a lot of money, subconsciously you think about that when you have breaks, when you're going to sleep, mm -hmm. and it stays with you. And over time, that can impact you. And we all know the challenges for people who have debt problems in their marriages. That's one of the number one causes for failure, failed marriages. So there are. Well, they say you should know his or her credit score and, and their attitude about money before you say it. Uh, absolutely true. I remember when I got married in 1985, my wife and I both exchanged credit reports. And I asked her, what was her credit like? She said, well, what is your credit like? <laughs> true story, true story. Uh, because we were both in banking, so that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons. But it is important to do that. And I tell people all the time, this is something that is achievable. See, when we talk about the wealth and all of that, nothing wrong with that, but I want to make sure people understand that what I'm advocating is something that is achievable. You can do that. And so in the book, I show my credit report. I show letters that I've written to Fair Isaac's company about all of those things mm -hmm. so people can see it. I actually have my budget in there along with my wife from 1991 that shows that I had a lot of different debt. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's sometimes what happens. The key is not staying there. Not staying there. Right. The book is available how? Uh, you can get the book on Amazon.com. Just put my name in, Dr. Howard Slaughter, Jr., or Addicted to Debt. That's the best way to get the book. Or if you know how to reach me, you can reach out to me by phone or well, email. Well, you can give your email if you want. I just think Amazon's easier, but let's give your email. Sure, sure. Use. It's uh, drhbsjr mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Are you a junior? You I am. You are a junior. I am a junior. <laughs> awesome. Okay, you know what? Sometimes I have guests on the show, they hit very close to home, and you did that today. Oh, but I appreciate that. Okay, I appreciate okay. that. So the next time I see you, I'm going to say, guess what? I'm out of debt. That's great. That's a great story. We're hearing that all over the place. Let's tell more stories like that. We're out of debt. That means a lot more than we're staying in debt. Indeed. Yeah, that's a good thing. Thanks so much. Thanks thank for writing you, the book, too. Thank yeah. you. This is my first book. I'm really excited, and thank you for allowing me to come on the show. Indeed. You know it, because what? I'm in debt. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about an effort to support Haiti. So don't go away when the Lynn Hayes Freedom Show continues.